Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to take a terrible plan and make it much better. This is a brand new two bedroom, two bathroom unit in Austin, Texas. It's a high rise building. It's newly built. It is 690 square feet or 65 square meters in size. Now, a lot of you are probably looking at this and saying, wow, that's a lot of stuff to jam into 698 square feet. And yes, it is. And that's part of the problem that we have with this floor plan is there is a lot of program. We've got two bedrooms, two bathrooms, kitchen, laundry, living, dining, and a balcony all within the 698 square footprint. So I'm gonna walk through the plan and tell you what I think the biggest problems are with the design, and then we're gonna proceed and see if we can fix it. We're gonna have our work cut out for us, aren't we? So let's start out <laughs> with the front entry. You walk in the front door and the front door blocks the door to bathroom number two. I think that is a terrible design problem right off the bat. I never like it when doors block each other. You come into an entry space, which is fairly tight, and then right away you're inside the kitchen. And the kitchen is this long, dark alley where all the appliances are in a row, so there's basically no counter space in the center of the plan in the darkest part of the floor plan. And I don't like that because this is a corner unit with lots of windows on two sides and the kitchen is in the darkest part of the plan where you're gonna spend a lot of your time. So I think that is a big no-no. And then we have another problem. The laundry is actually in the kitchen and it has no doors and it's right across from the stove. So if you're cooking scrambled eggs at the stove in the morning, and someone else is doing laundry, you're gonna be back to back, which is terribly inconvenient and I think not very good at all. Now, there's also a lot of problems, I think, with the bedrooms. And if we look at bedroom two, so this is the secondary bedroom, as you can see, the bed is jammed into the corner and there's only enough room for one night table. And if you zoom in closer and look at it, they've had to adjust the closet to make this little bit of space for the night table, which is not great. And then there's a whole bunch of wasted space, I think, in the center of the plan. And if we actually measure the width of the plan, it is eight feet, which is 2.44 meters at the widest. And in front of the closet, it is six foot six, which is 1.98 meters, which is not enough space for anything. And I think this bedroom is too small in terms of the width. If we go to the main bedroom, I think the challenges with the main bedroom is the door to the main bedroom is right off of the living dining area. So it basically looks directly into the living room space. And then I think the other problem with the main bedroom is it feels very, very jammed in with the furniture. I'm not sure there is enough room actually for a desk and for the bed at this end because if you look that the desk chair is hitting the edge of the bed so it feels very 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 tight i think one of the other issues too is the secondary bedroom the access to that is right off of the kitchen and this seems to be a bit of wasted space in front of the door which in such a tight unit i don't know if we've got any square inches to waste at all and then i think one of the other issues is the balcony it's nice to have an outdoor space but look at the door swing it takes up basically 50% of the space of the balcony. So you really only have space for one solitary little chair that you can sit out there and have your smoke and look at the view, which I don't think is very, very well done. So there is a lot of room for improvement here and we've got our work cut out for us. We're gonna try to make this plan much better. It is really interesting that the developer has insisted on two bedrooms and two bathrooms in this unit, but that is fairly typical for what we're seeing in new development in North America. And I believe as we go into the future, we're gonna see more and more of this type of unit. So I'm gonna start out by clearing everything out. And I just wanna talk about this. Look at this, it looks way better already. Very, very interesting. So I've cleared everything out. We have this mechanical space in the center that we actually cannot move or adjust or do anything with. This is gonna be one of the main plumbing and mechanical shafts. So of course we can't change that. We can't change any of the windows. So strategically, we're gonna to have to think about how we're gonna put everything back. But I think what is interesting is when you look at it this way, we actually have a really nice big space that I would like to take advantage of. It would be great if the living dining kitchen was all across the top. The challenge with that is, is that we could put one bedroom here, but if we left this all as living dining kitchen, we don't have a window or space for the other bedroom. So by law, by rule, we're gonna have to have the bedrooms in front of the window. So that is gonna limit 
our ability to design the plan. The other thing that's interesting is if we go back to the original layout, we had the bathrooms stack side by side, which is a very efficient layout. And I don't have an issue with the way the bathrooms are laid out. I actually think those are pretty good. And I think they make a lot of sense the way that they are laid out. And I'm going to just, for the sake of argument, I am going to keep the bathrooms in the same location. And I'm going to say we're going to have the bathrooms in exactly the same location because I think they're actually pretty well placed and pretty efficient. And what I've done is I have drawn a red box, a puzzle piece. For those of you who know about my online course, the Puzzler course, this is how I design floor plans. I try to draw out all the spaces as puzzle pieces or blocks and move them around. So this is the size of a bedroom. It is 10 by 10. So it is 10 feet by 10 feet, which is 3.05 meters by 3.05 meters. And that's kind of the minimum size that we can have for a bedroom and I'm going to duplicate this because there are two bedrooms that we have to deal with and I'm going to think about where we're going to put the bedrooms. Now I know that one of the bedrooms is going to have to go in front of this window here because we only have enough window space for two bedrooms and the other bedroom is going to have to go, well let's just think about it, could it go here? Well it could go here, I guess it could go there, we could put the second bedroom there and then you could walk in and you could have this as the living dining kitchen space. What is the problem with that? The problem with that is the bathrooms are now separated from the bedrooms and one of the bathrooms needs to be an ensuite so it has to touch the bedroom. So in some ways We've already answered our own question. We know that one of the bedrooms is going to have to go basically where it was before across from the other bathroom. So we know that's going to be the case. And then we've got this other bedroom here. So let's just see, should it move up? I'm just going to redraw my line here. Should we move it up? Can we have it up in this section? Well, it doesn't really work because if we have it up against this window here, we're going to have only very weird window spaces for the living, dining, kitchen space. And if we move it here, we've also got this weird L shape that doesn't work. I think we're going to have to use this window for the bedroom. And we obviously want to maximize the size of the living, dining, kitchen space because that was part of the problem before is it was too small. So what if we slid it all the way down to the bottom? This is kind of interesting. What if we came up with an idea where we split this window and half of this window went into the living, dining, kitchen space and half went into the bedroom? Well, that is what I'm going to suggest that we try. This is going to be my magic idea to start with to try to make this plan much better. And so this is what I've come up with in terms of the layout for this. And I think this is actually kind of interesting. What I have done is I have created basically two bedrooms pretty much where they were before, but with a little bit of some difference. So I've got the main bedroom at the top. I've just moved the wall back a little bit. I've scooched this wall back, this wall I've moved in just to tighten up the space and give some more room to the living dining area, which I think was lacking. So now this bedroom width is nine foot six, which is 2.9 meters, nine feet or 2.74 meters is the minimum. So this is just slightly bigger than the minimum for a bedroom. And I think that's acceptable. You can see that I've moved the door off of this long wall. So we've got a long wall in the living room and the door access is now from this hallway. Plus now I've got the other bedroom accessed opposite the bathroom. Can you see how I've moved the door to the bathroom up? So the front door swings against the wall and you don't have that door collision from before. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit more detail. And I'm going to show you what I've done as I built this up. So I have put a closet in bedroom two and I put the bathroom back for the main bathroom. So that's the shared bathroom. We now have a good sized entry. I've moved the laundry closet up. So the laundry closet is now up into the central hall. I've got the main bathroom more or less where it was before. The closet I've stretched just a little bit and I've got this little bit of extra space for storage in the hallway. So that's how I've designed the kind of layout of the bedrooms and the bathrooms. Now, interestingly enough, we have to discuss the kitchen and where is the kitchen going to go? So we know that a kitchen counter is two feet wide, right? We've got two feet in width. And let's just say our kitchen is going to be, let's just say eight feet long, just for the heck of it. We can stretch it or move it. So we are going to have a block of the kitchen like this. Now in the original design, they had a galley kitchen. And I think in a tight space like this, a galley kitchen does make sense. So I just want to take this kitchen idea and see where we could place it like a puzzler piece. 
Well, I guess we could put it up here in front of the corner window. What is the problem with that? The problem with that, let's just say the fridge, let's just magically, let's just draw the fridge in here because the fridges stick out a little bit more. They're a little bit chunkier than the rest of the kitchen. I'm just gonna sketch it in kind of roughly. There we go. So what is the problem with the kitchen being up here? The problem is I don't think we have proper distance here and here for a dining table. This is too tight. So we're not going to be able to fit anything else in that space. That's five feet, which is 1.52 meters. That feels like too much room for the alley of the kitchen, but not enough room for a dining table. So I'm not sure that's actually the best spot for the kitchen. I don't think it actually works there. So let's just try to move it down onto the opposite end. Well, it fits there. I'm just going to see if I can flip it around. Interesting. So I could put the kitchen down here as a galley kitchen. So you walk past the fridge that would leave this one big area open for a living dining and kitchen or living dining kitchen space. So I'm going to actually go ahead and try that idea. I'm going to sketch it out and I'm going to try to place the kitchen. Now the kitchen is going to be a compact galley type design. So let's just draw that in and I'll show you what I've come up with. I put the fridge on the end with the door swing this way. And you'll notice here I put a gable end on the fridge. So that's a piece of cabinetry. So you're walking in, you walk in past the cabinets of the kitchen. And then this is very, very tight. I've got a dishwasher, a sink, and I've centered the cooktop on the remaining counter. So I've got about 12 inches, I would say 12 to 18 inches, which is 30 to 45 centimeters on both sides for storage. And I've got upper cabinets and a little bit of a window there. I think that works well. It is smaller than the original kitchen design, a little bit smaller, but we have very limited square footage. So I'm making a decision that I want to go ahead and have the kitchen as a tight, compact galley kitchen. So let's now try to figure out if we can make this all work with the furniture. It's the magical thing that we have to do at the very end. So I've got my furniture out, my Morfolio template furniture, and I'm going to start out with the bed and I'm going to move the bed over and I'm gonna place it in bedroom two. It fits really well there. Now we have to have sliding doors on this closet because if we had door swings, it would collide with the night table. So I'm gonna duplicate the bed and move it into the main bedroom and it fits very well in the space that I've left. So the main bedroom is compact, it's tight, but I think it's acceptable to have the bed in a tight condition because it's well spaced with the night tables and there's even room for a TV opposite that. So I think that works pretty good. The entry, I think you guys will notice that we ditched the entry closet. That's the one thing that's not so great about what I've done is that I don't have an entry closet, but I am gonna propose that we do a built-in bench with some hooks and some storage for shoes and stuff underneath in lieu of the entry closet. I think that is a trade-off. I couldn't fit it in. I guess I could maybe push the bedroom closet in more, but then it makes that bedroom really tight. And that was one of the things I didn't like about the original plan. So now let's try to furnish the main living space. And I think that the, the table for the kitchen, I think obviously is gonna go opposite the kitchen. I think it might actually work well to have it really close to the wall or even touching the wall. And then if you had guests, you could move it out and you could uh, put chairs on the end. I think that actually feels really good. You could probably even get a bigger table. This is the one that we had originally in the original plan. And then in terms of the rest of the furniture, I think a two seat sofa would probably work in the corner with the window. And if it was my place, I would put the TV on the long wall so you can see it from everywhere in the unit. And then it might be nice to finish off with some club chairs and a round coffee table. I think that would look really, really good. Now, interestingly enough, I'm just gonna move the TV up just to center it a little bit better, get rid of this little glitch that I made on the bed area. Somehow I rubbed off some of the plans. So this is what I've come up with for the plan. I also, did you notice I changed the uh, swing door on the deck into a sliding door? I don't know if I'm allowed to do that, but I've renovated the outside of the building because then you can use the deck more, more efficiently and two people can sit out there as opposed to just one person sitting by themselves having a smoke and the freezing cold. Well, I guess in Austin, Texas, it doesn't get that cold, so it's not so bad. So this is what I've come up with to make this, what I think was a terrible plan, much better. Now, this is option one. I also have option two. I have two options, one and two, and I want you to study both because 
I made some changes between options one and two. They're a little bit different. Which one do you like better? I'm very curious what you think and what you would propose would be the better solution, option one or two. So you can leave a comment. And the other thing I wanna mention is that I do have my new Puzzler online course, which you can click on the link to sign up for that. And if you want to learn more about how to design floor plans the way I design floor plans, you can take my online course.